Hey guys, it's Ollie. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. You hear bells and stuff, by the way, in this video, it's just my cats in the background playing and stuff. So today we're going to be talking about beetles and if they are true bugs or not. Beetles will often get mistaken for true bugs when in reality they are separate and have their own distinguishing features. True bugs and beetles both belong to the same animal class, Insecta. So this means that true bugs and beetles are both insects, but beetles are not true bugs. It's important to note that true bugs and beetles are not the only insects, but those are the two we're going to be focusing on in today's video. The stink bug on my laptop. So let's start out by defining what a true bug is. True bugs belong to the order Heteroptera. There are approximately 40,000 species of true bugs in the world, and over 3,800 in the United States. Beetles, on the other hand, make up the order Coleoptera, which is the largest group of insects. Around 40% of all insects are beetles, and one in four all-known animals is a beetle. Since both beetles and true bugs are insects like we mentioned before, they do of course have characteristics of insects. They are invertebrates with six legs, a protective exoskeleton, a body with three segments, which is a head, thorax, and abdomen, compound eyes, and a single pair of antenna. And while some non-beetle insects look like beetles, there are some key differences, and it's very easy to tell them apart if you know what to look for. There are three specific differences between true bugs and beetles that we will be talking about in today's video. First, you're going to want to look at the wings and wing covers. Most insects will have two pairs of wings. Beetles will differ from all other winged insects by having the first set of wings be hardened and thickened. These hardened winged cases are called elytra. The elytra often covers most or all of the beetle's abdomen, giving them that shiny, smooth, shell-like appearance. This serves as a protection for their fragile flying wings, which are folded up underneath. In fact, the Greek root word for their order, Coleoptera, means sheath wing. This adaptation also allows them to inhabit places that other insects with more fragile or uncovered wings simply could not inhabit. They do make the beetles a bit more clumsy in flying, however, while other insects that don't have this protection are a little more fast and precise at their flying. And of course, there are a few true bugs whose wings resemble that of a beetle's. However, their wings are only partially hardened and thickened. The outside half of a true bug's wings are instead translucent. And not all beetles can fly, however, it is extremely unheard of for a beetle to not at least have wings. Some species, like the blue death fading beetle, actually do still have wings, although they are not visible. Instead, they are fused underneath their hard exoskeleton. And of course, the wings are not the only way to tell beetles apart. They can also be distinguished by their mouth parts. Yes, that is really what they're called. Beetles will always have chewing mouth parts, and they eat a wide range of plant and animal matter, where the mouth parts of a true bug are more needle-like. They are more designed for piercing and sucking, making them more adept to eat nectar, sap, and even animal fluid. If you simply flip the insect over, you can look at its mouth part. Just look underneath the head. If there is a ridge extending from the tip to the end of the head, it has probably got a piercing, sucking mouth part and is not a beetle. This does not automatically mean that the insect is a true bug, but it does mean that it is not a beetle. And now we're going to go to our last way of identifying true bugs versus beetles. This one, uh, you can't just observe by looking at the adult. This one, you would have to know its life stage. Beetles have a complete metamorphosis. This means that they will hatch from the egg as a soft worm-like creature. These are called larvae. The larva will eat several times its own body weight every single day. They do this so that they can grow really fast. The larval life stages of beetles are super diverse from one another in appearance, but generally they have an elongated look with three pairs of jointed legs at the front of the body. They are told apart from caterpillars by the lack of claspers at the hind segments of their body. At the end of the stage, the larva will make a hard shell around itself, becoming a pupa. At the pupa stage, they will stop eating and moving and will appear lifeless. Inside of the shell, the beetle is becoming an adult. And once they are done with that transformation, they will exit the pupa shell. They will then usually stretch out in the sun so they can dry and harden. Other insects do have a complete metamorphosis. It's not just beetles. 
Other insects that undergo a complete metamorphosis include bees, butterflies, moths, fleas, and mosquitoes. True bugs have an incomplete metamorphosis. This is simply where the insect will hatch from the egg looking like a small version of the adult. And the only way you can really tell the life stage that it's in is by the size. These are called nymphs. At the final nymph stage, the insect will molt into a fully mature adult. And once again, the only way you can tell the adult from the nymph stages is the size and the presence of wings. And there you have it. That is pretty much all that you can do to tell a beetle apart from a true bug. Again, I just want to reiterate, true bug is not every other insect. That is not how this works at all. True bugs are their own order. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and that you learned something or at the very least were entertained. I'm thinking about doing this alternating thing where every other week I have one of these more sciencey videos and on the other alternating week having a more pet focused video like I've done in the past. So let me know what you guys think about that. You guys do seem to like this more sciencey learning based one. And of course, give this video a like for the algorithm. Comment down below if you learned something that you didn't know before or if you wanted to add to this video or even have other recommendations for future videos, pet-wise or these more sciencey ones. All of my links, including my Instagram account, my art Instagram account, commissions are open, my Facebook group where we can share pictures and talk about our pets, as well as my wife and I's Etsy shop where we sell crafts, snail mix, all of that kind of stuff, will be in the description down below for you to go check out. And of course, subscribe to this channel if you are into this kind of content or really any animal kind of content. I upload every single Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, but you can hit the bell if you don't want to remember that. And as always, I'll see you guys next week. Bye.